Hello, welcome to the Addy Day Designs video blog. I'm Deanne and this is episode 6. I'm coming to you from Canberra, Australia, just in case you hadn't picked up on the accent yet. And this video blog is just like a bit of a visual diary into my crafting escapades, which are mostly yarn related, so knitting, crochet, uh, designing and a few things like that. So welcome back returning viewers. Hello to anyone that's new. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's really nice to share this with you and I hope you enjoy. So let's join on with the show. <laughs> What's been happening around here? Well, today is August 31st, which is the last day of winter for us here. Uh, winter is really hanging on. It's wet and dreary and nasty outside at the moment. We've had a few hints of spring, but yeah, it's still been pretty dismal, which is a bit sad, but because we've had so much rain, it is, seriously, it is so green around here, it's crazy. Normally this time of year, everything is very brown because the frost kills it all off. So to look outside, because we can see hills out this window here, um, they are so green and it's not even, well, tomorrow it's spring, but yeah, not even spring yet and we've already got lots of green. So I think it's going to be a spectacular spring uh, here in Canberra. You might remember in, I think it was episode three, we had a special guest, my daughter Imogen. She's a returning guest today. <laughs> Here we go, yeah, incredibly camera shy, my daughter. <laughs> so, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh dear. She's back here to show you something she's working on. So we'll go straight into WIPS, shall we? Do you remember what WIPS stands for? No. Works in progress, everyone. WIPS. We have some. You have one. So, a bit exciting. Um, Imogen's wearing her um, OTT hat that she finished a while back. And you had a bit of yarn left over, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, just a little. Just a little bit of yarn left over. So she wanted to make something to match. Yeah, look at it. Just a bit. She's still got a bit left over. Yes. So what did you decide to make? Well, I made this beanie and I thought, I've got heaps of yarn left over. What am I going to do with it? So I started looking through this book which I found the beanie idea from. And, okay. Do you want to hold it up? This is an awesome book. If anyone has children that they would like to get interested in crochet, this is a fantastic book. It's yes. a book by Claire Montgomery, who used to be the editor of the Inside Crochet magazine based in the UK. Claire's lovely. I've dealt with Claire a little bit, only online. Um, when she was the editor, I've had two pub two patterns published in Inside Crochet and Claire was lovely to deal with and so this book was just an awesome find and Imogen loves it so yes okay so, now about the book I'll stop interrupting yes thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> so I looked through and I found a mitten pattern and I thought I wonder if this has the same yarn as my beanie so I looked and I I, I asked Bob if it had the same beanie in the pattern and Bob, and the same yarn. The same yarn. Oh, it runs in family, I think. <laughs> We're both blonde. Yeah. So I looked through the book and found the mitten, mitten pattern. I asked Bob if it had the same yarn. And I was like, yes, it had the same yarn. So I was like, yay! <laughs> so I made this. We have a hoe. Yes. <laughs> it's a half object. So cover up your eyes. That's it. And it'll focus. There we go. So it's really cute, nice simple uh, fingerless mitt. We're not quite finished the second one, are no, we? No, because Randa destroyed it from its body. Yeah, um, we have two cats, and I don't know what it is with cats and yarn. And they like, are. The cliche is obviously true. They love playing with balls of yarn, but ours are weird. It's kind of like they need to separate the um, knitting or crochet project from the body of the ball, and then it's killed, and then they're happy. I don't know. I don't know what like, goes through okay. their mind. It's like, it's Bye. dead now. And I'll leave you a piece to die. <laughs> and then leave it alone. But anyway, so we're not quite finished that because Radar got into the yarn. But um, yeah, Imogen's really happy with her little her little mitts. And um, it is warming up, but we'll still have cold days. So she'll definitely get a chance to wear them before the winter well and truly finishes here. That's for sure. So that's your whip. Yes. What is my What was my whip? I am working. Okay, here's a bit of a sneak. Oh no. First of all, socks. I have socks, whips. Yes, socks. Okay. In your I don't know what I'm doing. Bag. Okay. Yes. I have. First of all, let's show these because you had yours as well. Check yeah. these Mom, ladies out. Okay. She, you bought two. Bought two. Well, I bought two for me. Yeah, two for you, but 
Yeah, what I, happened? I, I said, I said, oh, I love this little one. It's per so perfect for me making my business. Can I have it? It's one's like, fine. <laughs> it's like, yay! Yeah. Anyway, so Imogen claimed the other one. But these are from Freckled Whimsy. I was following, I've been following her for a while on it's oh not Etsy, on Instagram. You can see her little, cute little tag there, I hope. And she had a sale on a few weeks ago for, I think it was 20% off. So I thought, oh, I'm going to have to lift my game. I, this is my very first project bag. Very first. Never had one before. That would have been my second. That's Imogen's first now. Um, so all these beautiful project bags I've been seeing on all the podcasts and on everybody's Instagram feed. And I thought, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to lift my game. So I ordered a couple and I wasn't disappointed. These are so cute. Like they've got the little zipper pull um, handle. I'll try and get that in. I hope it is. I can't really see my screen. It is. Okay, thank you, my assistant. And cute button, uh, zipper, and then it's got gorgeous contrasting colour inside that one. Show the socks that you're wearing. I will, I will. I'm showing the bags oh, first. Goodness. And then this one is, we thought it was black. It looked black on my yeah, screen, but that's okay. Screen. And then there's the contrast. It looks like sprinkles color. in there, but it's got like blue colourful squares. Oh, no. It's like watercolour painting or something. But they're so cute and you can remove the handle if you want. And great little sizes, like Imogen's got her ball of yarn and one project in there, so that's like perfect one sock size. I can't remember what they're called. Um, I, can't, I think one's called like a sock minder or something, mine might have been. Anyway, go check out Freckled Whimsy on Etsy. She has some beautiful fabrics Instagram. there. Um, well, you can see her on Instagram, oh, but you buy them on Etsy. Right. Okay, so I her Etsy store. you getting mixed up like you. I know. I do tend to mix things up, but I got that right. <laughs> So, Freckled Whimsy on Etsy, check out her lovely bags, she's got some beautiful stuff, I will be ordering again, I wasn't uh, disappointed, and, and make for, sure you get one for me, make sure you get one for me, I, I'm going to be making Buy a few, things. you may have to share, yes. um, and the shipping to Australia was very, very reasonable, I think it was only $12 or something like that for the two bags, which was really, really good, so not a problem at all. So, shed the socks, yes, shed the socks, back to whips, okay, socks. <laughs> I've been playing with my needles again because I absolutely love Susan B. Anderson's Smooth Operator Socks pattern. So I cast on two more pairs. Can you believe it? So here's one. This is with my Circus Tonic Handmade yarn. And I will put the colorway down there. Was that Zebra Finch? I think this is Zebra Finch, this one. And this is a Malabrigo colorway. Which, again, I can't remember. I'm so sorry. I'll, um, I'll put the details down here. And um, thank you for that. <laughs> you can go now. <laughs> I haven't finished. No, really. Um, yeah, so I've done that much on this one, which I just love. It's beautiful. And I have a second one in this project bag, which easily fits two, pro two soft pack um, projects anyway. And I started a second pair. Now this is sport weight yarn. That's why it's going to look a little bit, I know, funny, chunkier. Is that bad? That's I don't mean to say chunky as in bad, but it's, no, a, no, obvi it's obviously focusing. a heavier yarn weight. It's focusing. It's okay. It's good, yeah. Um, I just modified um, the stitch count, which is really easy to do. So I'm normally a 56 stitch sock for fingering weight yarn. And I think I took this down to 48 stitches and 3 millimetre needles, I think. Um, and it seems to be fitting really well. And I even got my sister making socks. She was visiting recently, um, came down with my mum and brought my nieces and nephew down with her and got her started on that pattern as well. So she's making her first sock from that pattern. And well, she's already got a hope. To a pair of homemade socks that you made for Well, her. yeah, those are the ones. I gave her the, my first pair because I made them a little bit too big for me in my first attempt. Which and they fit, did they fit dad's foot, but yeah, too yeah. girly. <laughs> yeah, weren't quite dad's colours, were they? <laughs> He's got small feet. Um, small boy feet, anyway. So yeah, they're my two whips. Two, not quite hose, but really, really happy. They're going really well. I'm enjoying them and they fit nice and snugly in my new freckled whimsy project bag so that's really fun it kind of it does i gotta say i should have bought a project bag ages ago it's so nice to have your special projects in something nice and yeah it keeps them safe from kittens as well 
So that's good too. Oh, you've got a, an FO. Yes. That's right, I forgot. Us now, this is your FO. Also from the, also from the book. Yes. I got my first project, uh, not project. Yeah, it's a project. Is it? A finished object, you could say. But it is a project. You just anyway, working on it. This anymore. was my first finished thing that I made. It's a belt, surprisingly. Yes, you may have gathered that. Um, yeah. So Found the same book. That was her first project from that book. So, yes. as I said, highly recommend that book. The first thing that kids. I ever finished. It was too hard. I was making a blanket. It was like, this is too hard. Yeah, and blankets are a bit of a big commitment. Every so, kid wants to make a doll's blanket until they realise how long it's going to take. <laughs> I said, Mum, can you please finish this? And they were like, how long would it take you to finish it? And like, probably a day. And it's like, can you do it? And it's like, no, you wanted to do it. And it's like, oh, come on. You make your own blanket. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Sally, for sharing that. You may go now. You're excused. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. All righty. So what else have I got to show you? That's a few um, whips. Mm, whips, 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 Imogen's fingerless gloves. I do have another whip which kind of leads into mm, designs in progress as well. And an FO. I've been holding out on you. Terrible. Sometimes I say I've got no whips or no FOs and it's not because I don't actually have them. <laughs> it's just because they might be for designs coming out and I can't show you yet. Um, so yeah, so I just, it's easy to say I don't have any. When I say I don't have any, I mean I don't have any I can share. But I am going to show you, <laughs> okay, what we were saying before about the kittens, Imogen has just rescued a ball of yarn <laughs> attached to a project Go from me. the cats. Oh dear. Okay, back, that'll teach back. me for having Plus them out. Let's separate my thing from my ball. Shh. <laughs> we're recording. They're gone with you. Okay, so here is an FO, no, a, a whip of a dip, design progress, isn't that what we were saying they were? Um, that I am putting together in collaboration with Peter from Dingo Dye Works. Excuse me. Imogen! The cat! No! dip design in progress as well as well this is a design I've been working on in collaboration with Peter from Dingo Dye Works the lovely Peter and oh my goodness the most delicious yarn you will ever run through your fingers <laughs> seriously it's pure delight to work with this yarn so I'm having so much fun right now so here is my whip now it's gonna kind of look a little weird in this unfinished state Oop. but this is for a new well, I, it's not really a shawl, it's more like a, it's a scarf length, really. A narrow, really long, narrow, shawl-ish. It's a crescent-shaped scarf. But here is the finished object. This is the first prototype I did, and this, the whip is um, all in Dingo Dyewex yarn. So this colorway here is uh, Fraser. This one is Carimbia. In her, in Peter's uh, Ridgy Ditch sock base, which is just amazing. It is so good to use. Please, please do yourself a favor and get yourself some. It is great, great stuff. And here is the first prototype I did, which did use a bit of Dingo Dye Works. You can see I've got the Carimbia again, beautiful olive color. Um, but here you can see, so I've finished that like first section and opens up. It's really hard to show on the camera because it's so long. <laughs> but yes, that is a design that is being tested right now. Um, I'm working on the Dingo Dye Works prototype. I'm not going to show you what the third colour is going to be. I'm going to leave that as a surprise. So, but it's working up really, really well and I'm really happy with it. And it's amazingly easy. 
um, designed to follow. So it would be really good to get that out there to you very shortly, I hope. So I'll keep you posted there. I'm timing things in with Peter because we're going to do a bit of a special release type thing because um, she's going to be dying up some kits to um, make the scarf with as well so that'll be exciting and this is designs going to be called sway so i'll put the name of it up here so keep your eyes open for sway on um on here soon so yes that that is a very exciting um fo and whip at the moment and i'm loving working it up um, not only is the yarn deliciously soft but i said because the like i said because the um stitch pattern is so easy to follow it, it just it's effortless it's probably one of the easiest things I've made, uh, but I find the um, effect with the striping uh, really, really effective. Effect, effective. Anyway, I find it really, <laughs> it's got a lot of wow factor, I think, depending on your color choices. So, you know, you can really go for broke um, with your colors or you can keep it really muted and, um, and low key if you want to. So it's entirely up to you. Piper. Can you please rescue my yarn from the cat again? <laughs> We're really having one of those um, never work with animals or children days today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> never mind. So while I'm talking about Dingo Dye Works yarn, um, I'll, sh I'll show you some of the other colours that Peter sent me. She was so sweet. Um, she let me choose what colours to make this prototype with. and sent me a bunch of colors i couldn't believe it we talked about a couple on on the phone when we spoke and she said she'd send them over to me because we're on opposite sides of australia canberra's over on the eastern well not coast but eastern side and Perth, if you don't know right over on the western coast so we're as far away as you can get from each other pretty much um in this country so um yeah she said she'd send me some and she sent me way more than she said she was going to so here's to these are the two colours I decided not to use, not because there was anything wrong with them, but just because the other colours went together better. But check these babies out. Now, technically they're not in my stash, um, but I'll share them with you anyway, because everybody needs some Dingo Dialects in their day. So this colourway, these are both on the Ridgy Didge base, again, and this colourway is Salt Lake. Check that out. It's such a beautiful green. It's got little hints of... Um, you might be able to see it on this side. Can you see that like little hint of mustard? So that it's not solid, you know, full limey green. It's just beautiful. Awesome, awesome colorway, that one. And this one is blue gum, which is a lovely blue gray. There we go. It is so, so pretty. I really want to use this for something else. <laughs> not sure what yet. But um, it is such a pretty colour. So another two beautiful colours uh, by Peter. Again, these were the ones in the shawl. That's your um, Fraser. After I'm guessing Fraser Island, which is a big sand island off the coast of Queensland. Hence the colour. I'm, I'm assuming, I hope I'm assuming that correctly. And then Carimbia, which I've mentioned before. There we go. Oh, look, the sun's come out for a bit. <laughs> what a shock. So, loving using those. Excuse my crinkly plastic while I put those away. So having a lot of fun working with that at the moment, but because I've been so good after Bendigo, I haven't actually purchased any more yarn, but I'm not suffering. It's okay. I have plenty to choose from, as I'm sure you're aware. So what else can I share with you today? Oh, I do have some sad news. Yes. From my last episode, you may remember, I mentioned my beautiful three quarter sleeve mohair jumper uh, that I made when I was about 15, 16. And I was getting very passionate about the longevity of handmade and how wonderful it is that it can last this long because this thing's got to be about 30 years old. Well, I received some very sad news when my sister came to visit. <laughs> my beautiful mohair sweater that was made for a 15, 16 year old uh, did not survive my brother-in-law. <laughs> my dear brother-in-law, Rich, uh, who's all kind of special. 
was being a very good husband one day and put the wash on for my sister and threw in the mohair jumper which apparently now fits a three-year-old <laughs> I know can you believe it oh what perfect timing after all that talk last time about how great it was that it lasted so long and this poor little thing well yeah it is now little <laughs> didn't survive so never mind rich I do love you and thank you for doing the washing for Renee <laughs> But yes, it didn't survive, sadly, so a bit sad about that, but I had to have a good giggle at the timing too. I finally mentioned it on uh, the video blog and then it gets killed. <laughs> so, never mind. Keep them out of the machine, people, if they're not super wash, okay? <laughs> Lesson for today. So, we don't want to end on a sad note. Um, so, I thought I'd share one of my favourite techniques another one of my favorite techniques there's nothing technical uh, it's just something I like to do one because I hate weaving in ends and two because I like the way it looks so I'll share it with you uh, it's it's nothing really new but we'll talk about it it's just a, a way of working in the round just working in the round that probably sounds bizarre because it isn't anything new but I find um, well, I try in my designs anyway. Um, when you're working low stitches like single crochet, I don't see the point in slip stitching to finish around and then having to chain one and then start a new round because you do you get that obvious line where you finish the round and start a new one. And when you're working such low stitches like single crochet, I I simply don't find it necessary. I think it's looks much better on a finished product if you well okay if you're doing a round of single crochet I would start slip stitch then next it next next stitch that's hard to say next stitch single crochet and then continue around and then when you reach that first slip stitch single crochet into it like you would normally and then just keep going so you're just building on a spiral then there's no obvious beginning or end to the round you don't have that bump seam that can show up when that happens um, and your finished project looks a lot better much like knitting when you're knitting in the round um, does it just keeps going and going and going there's no beginning or end um, to the rounds uh, it just spirals up so I use that in um, I'll use it in quite a few of my designs. I use it in this design. This is Pogo. This is a little hat. Okay, so once you've done the ribbing for the hat band, the next section is just worked in the round. And when you get to the beginning of the first round, you just sort of skip over and, and start going over the top. So the whole thing is worked in a spiral. It doesn't affect the finishing because you just make sure that you start at the same point so that you, it's level on both sides and seam the top up. So for this project, it does not affect it. There's no obvious seam or join to the end of any kind of round. And yeah, perfect. I, let's face it, who wants a bump that doesn't have to be there in your project? Um, but it isn't just for short stitches you can work them into a project that has taller stitches. Now this is my Eliza scarf. Okay. This is, this was a, this is my very first um, published design published in inside crochet. As I mentioned before, the one that I dealt with Claire Montgomery with. Um, so this is a bit special, this one. Um, but you notice, okay, they're not all single crochet stitches. Okay, it starts off with short stitches, but there's tall ones there as well. What I did with this one, um, and this also shows that it's not just for one color projects, you can actually use it when striping as well. You just gotta be a bit clever about how you start and finish, that's all. So this one starts off with rows of single crochet. I started off with one, and then introduce the second color exactly the same way as I started the first. You know, your first stitch is a slip stitch. So it's, it, you know, you've got to just gradually work up to the taller stitches. And that's the trick. So you start off with a short stitch, like slip stitch, next one, maybe two single crochet, but then you can work up higher, half double crochet. These are um, 
I'm speaking US terminology, just so you know. Um, and then slowly build up to the tall stitches. And then do that with your second color as well. And you can stack them too. So you've actually got two colors working in a spiral over top of each other. So you, you go around as far as you can with the first color and then you follow it with the second color and then when you reach your beginning of your round you continue on with color one, continue with color two. So it's kind of like two spirals um, going over top of each other. I might not be explaining it really well but if you want to this pattern is free. It's available on my website or on Ravelry. It's called Eliza. Um, that's what they named it for the inside crochet edition. So E L I Z A. I'll put the details down here. It's free. Um, it's a the really great thing about striping this way is that if you get really cheeky, you find a self striping colorway like this one. I think this is a Noro Teo sock, which I love, um, and a plain color or whatever color. Anyway, whatever you want to stripe. Get one that changes colours for you. And this one's also done in a tube. <laughs> so as you can see, it's like, and you just keep going around. Any ends you have, you just tuck into the inside. <laughs> and no one will ever know. <laughs> so I'm like super cheeky with this one. I don't like weaving in ends. I don't like that join look at the uh, beginning of each round. And um, what was the other thing? You can hide the ends in. That was it. Two things. Anyway, two of my favourite things. If I don't have to weave in ends and I don't have that join mark, I'm pretty happy. So yeah, check this pattern out. Like I said, it's free. Um, it's a really versatile scarf. I've worn that one a ton, so I hope you enjoy it. So that's that little tip. Actually, that's a technique, the whole spiral thing, that um, not only in the pogo hat, which is this one, but a while ago I showed you this design, which is the uh, my slinky design, which is a neck warmer, which you can tighten up with your pom-poms at the neckline so that it keeps the wind out. Now this, yay, is in testing as we speak. I'm hoping to have it released in the next few weeks, depending on how long um, it takes for all the details to get back from the testers, but it's just about ready to go. So I've kind of missed the southern winter, obviously, because it's spring tomorrow, but hopefully we'll have it well and truly in time for all you northern um, crocheters uh, ready for your winter, because I know things are starting to cool down rather quickly over over the other side of the world. So, yay. So Slinky, yes, uses that technique as well. The body of the work is just done in a spiral, so there are no... You cannot see where one row finishes and another row ends, which is really nice. You don't want to have to have that if you don't, if you don't need to. So, yes, there's another bit of exciting design news happening. So for anyone who's wondering what I'm wearing today, thank you for asking. <laughs> this is my Montville shawl. Uh, it looks a little bit different to the one shown on the pattern page because I striped this one. Very simple. I started off with just some narrower, hang on, wrong end, narrower stripes and they got wider. I just had two colours that I liked together. This one's actually a blend of, I think it's Kid Silk Mohair, really fine, like lace weight with another yarn. So it's got a bit of a halo and it's lovely and soft. So anyway, that's what I'm wearing today, in case you're wondering. And that's all I have for you this week. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed it. Oh, I almost forgot. And I don't have it here. Hang on, excuse me. Remember this? Probably not the best example of it. This one uh, was a chunky cowl I worked up on a very cold day or weekend a while back that has a lovely ribbed effect. As you can see, that it kind of looks knitted, but it's not. Um, all going well, I will have the instructions to make this loaded onto my website by the time this video goes live. So that's my intent. I may even film a video to show exactly how I get that ribbed effect with crochet. It's really easy, but sometimes it's easier to show you how to do it than write instructions. 
<laughs> trying to explain how to do it. So that's my plan anyway, to have the written instructions with hopefully some, at least very least, photos uh, on my website and then possibly even a video. So keep your eyes posted, uh, subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel uh, if you want to be notified when that might be up. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd pop it on there. It's just one stitch worked in the round. It uses that spiral technique as well. So there's no obvious beginning or end all the way around, which let's face it, in a chunky um, yarn like this would be incredibly obvious. Um, and who wants that? So keep an eye out for that. I hope to have that ready for you. So that is the plan. I've got so many things going on at the moment. It's just crazy. So hopefully I'll have a few more announcements as far as um, design releases go in the next few weeks. So as long as I can get myself organized, I will have a lot to be able to really share with you, not just show you what I'm doing, but you can join in as well. So thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, I hope wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you're enjoying your crafting as always. And I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.